I'm going to talk today about how you write script directions, that is about describing the characters and the action and location, and I'm going to talk about what new writers unfortunately get wrong. So wrong that people stop reading the script. So it's serious. In my experience, what new writers get wrong these days, and it's happening more and more, is not using the wrong formatting for camera directions or scene headings or, you know, getting wrong the way you set out a two-way telephone call. That's not a problem. What people these days often get badly wrong, and so wrong that producers will actually stop reading them, as I say, is that they include far too many instructions about how the look, how actors look and behave and what's happening generally on the screen. Additionally, you know, they can add either too much or too little about the location. Now, obviously, I really understand. I mean, a writer's intention is to make the reader vividly visualise the screen, this scene, you know. So, but where all of this goes wrong is that when these people write the material, it, they're writing it as if it's in a novel or a short story, including details that would be completely appropriate, in fact, really excellent in prose fiction, but in a script are irritating because they are redundant. Now, I, I once read a script in which a 90 second scene of two people chatting over coffee actually unintentionally specified instructions for over 30 movements of the characters and the camera, the camera angles. You know, not in terms of using specific camera directions like, you know, ECU Mary's eye, but by specifying the actor's moves and the actor's point of view and responses and so on between lines of dialogue. So lifting the coffee cup to his mouth. He smiles, setting down his coffee cup, turns the cup around, turns to Mary and so on. The script was impossible to read. I continue to read it. Now, you know, many industry professionals wouldn't have. So just for the record, you know, I, I see it. <laughs> Seem to recall that the only stage direction Shakespeare ever used, apart from exits and entrances, was exit pursued by a bear, which clearly was just too good to miss. <laughs> so, look, yes, a script has to be a good read, but its core purpose is to be an instruction manual, you know, for, for an army of people who need to bring the film to the screen, whose, whose job it is to do something very specific in the whole process. And the script is a means to an end, a recipe, right? It's concise and precise. So here's the thing. Everything that is on the page is deemed in the industry to be essential. So the rule is if, if an instruction of any kind is on the page, it's deemed to be crucial to the story. So, you know, if a character's appearance is described in detail, you're telling, you know, wardrobe, makeup, hairdressers, all these people to replicate exactly what is described because it's important to the story. Now, if an acting direction is given, you're telling the actor and the director that this must be reproduced, you know, throwing his arm in the air. Well, maybe, you know, something's going to fall on his head or something, but, do, do you know, <laughs> you're saying that's important to the plot. And if you specify a punkish boy with pink streaked hair, you're saying that that hair colour is vital and you're requiring the hairdresser to schedule a hair appointment or a day's rehearsal, meaning an earlier call, more money, and then probably the actor's agent would ring up and say, no, 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 because the actor has got another job next week, can't possibly have pink hair for the job. You see what I mean? If you specify a black leather chair, someone will need to source a black leather chair because you're telling them it's important, and on and on. Now, when it's clear that this stuff is redundant, as it very obviously often is it's immediately clear it's it's irrelevant and it's not nobody's going to be, be doing these and following these instructions you're wasting everyone's time so unless the details are vital to your plot you describe characters very generally you know don't suggest pink hair i know that you're trying to get the atmosphere just say punkish 15 year old boy or fragile old lady conversely though you know if details are essential because for example, a character has physical characteristics that make her identifiable as the person who committed the crime, that detail should be included. Oh, by the way, something that people often don't realise is a lot of people working on the film or TV episode may not read the script in full. 
They'll read the script for the bits that are relevant to them as placed where it's standard for those bits to be placed, right? And they take their bits very seriously. They're not going to scan through and just to, just to check that this isn't an elaborate piece of writing, you know? Um, the other thing is that readers of scripts have to be able to clearly see the film in their heads at the same pace as it would happen on the screen. Now, this is something that new writers aren't really aware of. And that is that when a film professional is reading a script, they're visualizing it in their heads as a finished film, as it would play, right? They're judging as they read whether the film is running at the right pace, is intelligible plot-wise, has sufficient rising suspense, is engaging, you know, emotionally as intended, and so on. But if you heap on unnecessary description of action or costumes or environment, it makes this internal film show <laughs> impossible because the, the reader has to keep stopping their mental stopwatch, stopping their mental camera while, you know, you are rambling on, if you'll forgive me. So, you know, as a reader, and I've done this often, it's not even possible to scan that redundant stuff so that you can hold on to the timing, you know, picking out the essence, because it's too easy to miss something. Something might be concealed amongst all of this stuff. So oh, the other thing is that, you know, further to the whole matter here, if you write something like, she rushes out into the rain, having picked up an umbrella as she went out of the door, <laughs> realise that the person reading it is going to have to rewind. They're going to have to rewind their mental image of the character running out of the door and insert that person picking up an umbrella and then running out of the door, all right? Now, and that wrecks the timing. It's incredibly irritating to have to keep doing that. So oh, the other thing is, you know, if you have a scene heading that reads exterior car park night and then you add on the next line, the car park is at the back of a line of shops, the reader's going to have to rewind to reimagine that, all right? I mean, the, the uh, other thing is that the, the person looking for the locations is going to be pretty miffed because, you know, again, it's just, I have to, they'll keep saying, I have to keep reading this to, to find out what I'm supposed to be doing. So, yeah, if you, and also, you know, with the locations, if you delay important location information, remember somebody's got to source that location, all right? So just, just work... Work well with your team. A film is a collaborative enterprise. You're just one cog in this whole uh, thing. Be helpful. Well, the other thing is that, you know, typically, you know, producers have piles of waiting scripts and the time when they read scripts is late at night after work when they're tired. And people are human. Patience is limited. If your script is unreadable, a tired, overworked reader is going to put it aside. They may have every intention of coming back to it, but you know, then they think, oh, I can't be bothered with that. So all of your passion, all of your ideas, for nothing. So minimise directions of any kind. Include only what isn't obvious. Remember that reader's internal camera and stopwatch. And the script must be readable at the speed it will play. All right, I hope that was useful. Don't forget to subscribe. There are lots of videos here about the nuts and bolts of writing. For more articles, see my website and my book, the 21st Century Screenplay for information about conventional but also non-linear and multiple protagonist script writing and how you structure things like the pulp fiction models and multiple interconnected stories and so on. So thanks for watching.